<laughs> Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. Make sure that y'all can hear. All right. If you can hear me, put a one, then I'll know that I am in a different situation. So I hope you can hear me. All right. So I am going to talk about this case, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, um, leaving leaving Kansas. Yeah, I'm live. Nobody's put a one yet. That is a little worrisome. Hmm. Am I not live? Let me check my... Yes, I'm live. Why can't you hear me? Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Okay, Ava Renee. How are you guys doing? Critter can Critter Watcher can hear me. Thank you. Thank y'all. Okay. All right. It weird. And I oh hate voice for the voiceless. Man, I hate these headphones. Oh, they're awful. They make me they're noise canceling and they drive me crazy. Okay. So I hope everybody is doing fine. Um, voice for the voiceless. Is she crazy or is she crazy? I'm not saying anything else, but damn, that has gotten so weird. So y'all, I'm sorry. I had to like talk to voice for the voiceless for a minute because that is some crazy stuff going on. I am blown away and, um, yeah, yeah, that is some weird stuff. It, it, yeah, I'm. I am so glad I did not get caught up in that. Thank you. You know, you know, it was one of those things. I got to tell you, it was one of those things where my inner voice, my inner voice, was saying something's wrong here. Back away, back away from this. Don't do it. And I called on the phone. I said, I will not be on your live. I will not, <laughs> I will not be. So thank goodness. Cause, and, and I'm not altogether sure. I can tell you this part too, voices. I'm not altogether sure that the excuse that's come forward, I'm not altogether sure that that's even the truth because she's now saying as her excuse, why she was doing that live. She's actually saying what I was telling her the reason that I wasn't going to be on the live because I didn't agree at all with what what her premise was, which was to go against. <sighs> she she was putting people on the spot and I was I could tell I was going to be on the spot. And no, I was just like this. No, 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 no. So I am. Oh, thank goodness. Right. Thank goodness. Because, you know, I avoid drama. Like that is my number one stay out of the drama and and thank God that I listen to my internal voice. So you guys, you know that little tiny voice inside of you that tells you I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> listen, just listen to the voice. You don't have to understand the voice. You don't have to interpret it. You don't have to say, you know, just listen because it's there to protect you. I promise. So I I definitely dodged a bullet. Thank. Thank goodness I dodged a bullet. So anyway, totally disagreed with the whole thing that was happening. Just craziness. And she was, because I know she was, she was in fact going to um, use the whole Cajun Navy to stir up drama with some of the YouTubers. That was what it was all about. And I was like, N you leave me out. I, th this is going, is going nowhere. This is a... This is a, somebody stirring, creating a shit show. So, yeah. Me too. Me too, Shalimar. Me too. Why? Right now? What? 
you got to go live voice voiceless you got to go live why did she do that oh my god i'm sorry i know it's irritating when you don't know what's going on but this is big i know what why is she at your door why are the cops at your door voiceless what a heifer now right now martian plant what a bi wow no hey kim how are you we are freaking out kimberlick you know who for harassment um look it's very hard to claim harassment on a person who has put their whole life out in front of the world to see that is just goofy that is just goofy see i'm telling y'all i had i felt like i was getting set up I felt like I was going to end up on, oh my God, what a, what a nut, man. Well, I'm so sorry that they're there, voiceless. Wow, that is just incredible. Well, well leave her be, then. <laughs> leave her be, and the, and the truth is, she's not worth your time she is not worth your time to even worry about her just just lord lord what is wrong with that woman good god oh my god Ooh, jackie blue lives a life from inside of a room how are you doing jackie it's friday i'm doing good she came in here and tried to get clout. I hung as long as I could, but my intuition told me, no, hell no. That's talk, that's Texas talk, y'all. We, Me and Martian Planet are communicating. We know what hell no. We know what that means, don't we? Drama queen is an understatement. Understatement. Good Lord, that woman is out in left field. Whew. I knew, look, I knew there was something wonky, something, you know, was on tilt when she said, how did she say it? She said something like, uh, she said when she wants her, I swear y'all, I'm not making this up. I promise you, I can't, scouts on her. She said something like when I want my husband's attention, when I want my husband to listen to what I'm saying. I mess with him and get him naked and then say what I want to say so he can't like run away or something, I guess. Can you believe that? Is it just me or does that sound particularly weird? It's crazy. It's not even a funny joke. I know, Kim. It's not even a funny joke. It's just creepy and kind of rapey. Right? I mean, I know it's a woman against the guy, but it still it sounds 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 wrong. <laughs> it so, sounds like something my Sunday school teacher would not be very happy with. <laughs> yeah, she she damn sure said it. She said she made it got made her husband get naked, and then when he was naked, then she would tell him whatever it was that she had to say. I'm gonna find that video clip. I've got it. It was some kind of weird, like, uh, I don't know, somebody recorded her talking to Bullhorn Betty or voices behind the wall or so, talking to someone. I, I don't know. I don't know if she knew she was being recorded. But um, in this particular recording, she's sort of making a, you know, like she's, I think it was Bullhorn Betty she was talking with. And, and she's saying, like in a joking fat or not not in a joking fashion but like she's like smug and like i'm so smart 
that when she wants to get her husband to listen to something she has to say, she gets him naked first, and then he's like held hostage. That's absolutely true, I promise. That's a, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Yvette, Yvette, things are so weird over here, Yvette. Get voice, voice for the voiceless was just in here, Yvette. And the cops are at her damn door. Guess who called the cops on her? I give you one guess, Yvette. Who called the cops on her? Guess. Guess who called the cops on her? On Drew, uh, voice for the voiceless. You know, old Freaky Deke over there. Yeah, uh -huh. she did it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to tell you the thought that I had, Kim. And this may make me a sicko. I don't know. But I have the thought, does she mean that she like seduces her husband and makes him think, you know, it's going to be a little hubba hubba. And then, and then once he thinks, you know, it's on like Donkey Kong, then she says, oh, by the way, I need, you know, $10,000 to go to Disneyland. Like what is what does she what does she mean <laughs> that she makes him get naked? <laughs> I don't understand? <laughs> Can y'all come up with a different scenario that would make sense? Just being honest, I was always wondering if she was a little person. I mean, that's PC terminology. I think we all be calling her Donkey Kong. I think you you are the winner, Yvette. You won that prize, my friend, <laughs> with one guess. <laughs> yeah, I think we ought to call her Donkey Kong. It's all my Donkey Kong. Wow. Yeah, it's freaky deek. Freaky deek. I, Kim, my husband would just laugh at me. He's like, well, you better go seduce someone else because I'm not giving you $10,000 for Disney World. <laughs> Well, yeah, so, it, yeah, holding him hostage, or it's sort of rapey, right? You know who it is, Jackie Blue. She struck me for my info and then called the cops. So she's a snaky donkey Tonk Kong. Wow, you turned out to be a real snake, little miss. A real snake. She was snaky with me. I am convinced of it in my heart of hearts. I am convinced that I was being set up. I believe that in my heart. I believe it. So, yeah, it is insane, Yvette. The whole, the whole thing has just turned into a... I have never listened to uh, Deets on the... Is it Deets on the Street? Um. I, I really had, I've heard some of the names, like I heard Glarer, I watch Glare every now and then. I, I um, heard him say her name. I think Heels in the Air was talking about Deets one time. So, and of course I know who Chase and Truth is. I've listened to her quite a bit, but um, I'd never really listened to that particular group of people. Voice was on, Voiceless was on there the other night and um I was blown away to hear the like the explanations she was trying to give, the way she treated that man, that preacher. Oh my God, was nuts. Well, I think Ava Renee, Renee, I think it's been like just unfolding, right? It started with Cajun Navy, and it's just not stopped. But look, look, the reality is, is that it seemed to me that it was like a gotcha kind of thing set up. Um, even the glare called her tragedy pimp. Kind of, kind of like the ultimate tragedy pimp, right? That, that she's going to outdo all the other tragedy pimps, right? Yeah, it, it's bad. It is. And I am just, oh, every day since it all happened, I'm so grateful that i I listened to that little voice inside and I kept saying, this is going, this is not, she's, this isn't right. Like for one thing, my first sign was, why is this a secret? 
Why are you keeping your special guest a secret? She even made me promise not to tell who it was. Don't tell. And I wanted to laugh and go, I don't talk to anybody. Who in the world would I tell? My husband, he doesn't care. And so then she told me, and she told me what she her plan was for the live, what she was going to do. And I told her right then, I said, I'm not the one. You do not want me here because you are not going to be happy with what I have to say. I don't agree with you. Well, I just want you to come and let me put up the evidence that I have. Put the evidence up. And I felt kind of bad for her because she was saying, it's going to be so bad if you're not here and people are expecting you to be here. And I was like, okay, but I'm not going to edit my opinion. I'm going to be straight up telling you exact. I'm not going to get in between the Cajun Navy and JLR. I'm not doing any of that. I'm not. I, this is not right. I told her, I warned her. If you listen in that video, she says something about one of her friends said something who's obviously smarter than her. That was me telling her, don't do this. And she did it anyway. Yep. It was, but the thing that really, thing that really bothered me is after it, it all came out and supposedly Cajun Navy dunked out at the last minute, then her story changed, right? Her story changed. Suddenly it wasn't all about talking about what a great job Cajun Navy was doing. Oh no, now it was all going to be about how she was going to protect JLR. That is a lie. That is not what she was doing. This was going to be like a gotcha on JLR. So I flat out told her just what I said public on my channel. No, I, I the United Cage Navy has done great things in Houston, Texas. And if we get a hurricane this year, I'm going to be asking those boys to come get me. They're going to come help me. I'm not going to step on their toes. Uh-uh. No way. And they have credibility. I mean, they've done great work here when we were having Hurricane Harvey. They were amazing. And I damn sure am not going to say a word about JLR because that guy's been down on the border. The, the footage that he's been able to get and showing the reality and the truth about what's happening. I mean, he has done such a remarkable job. And I was just like, no, I'm not going after any of these people that you're trying to set up. No, this is weird. This is, don't do this. And she tried to do it anyway. I don't know why. Cause, well, because she's a she, drama queen, right? She wanted, she wanted to stir up some excitement. I think, I'm guessing, my speculation. I think she just wanted to stir up some drama that would attract people to her channel. I mean, I don't know of any other explanation for it because it was so weird you know uh she's run me wrong since day one but i was nice to her out of respect for you you are very you're a good friend hybrid and i've got a great deal of respect for my friends here so y'all have to tell me some of you guys did tell me that y'all were skeptical i think i think martian planet art told me that she and if and, and somebody else told me too so some of you did, you know, and you know, I don't like drama. I don't want to, I don't, I just want to be friends with everyone. I want to be Switzerland, right? That's me. I'm Switzerland. But sometimes when it's done, it's done. You know, when you step off in it, you, you show, then you gotta, you gotta take a stand. And this was so messed up. Proudfoot messing with Cajun Navy that caused all the rigmarole between JLR and the Navy. I too think the Navy will be here to bail us out if we get a hurricane. That's the other thing. So, so uh, Martian Planet Art, I can't tell like where she is, but but Martian Planet Art is somewhere along the Gulf Coast between you know Texas around the Florida somewhere around there. And she is very well aware of the United Cajun Navy. No, these people do great work. So I don't know what happened in the search for Sebastian. I'm not saying that I have an opinion about all of the chaos that happened. I don't really know what it what created it. I think it might have even been a third party kind of stirring up trouble. But but in terms of just good people doing good work, I I you can't i was not going against either group either of the two not a not a bit 
And I'm also, you also have to understand this too. I'm not one of those people that will look at someone and find out, oh, you were in prison um, 30 years ago or 15 years ago. I don't look at people that may have gotten into prison or uh, legal trouble like earlier in their life or had drug problems or something earlier in their life and then look at them as, oh, that means that you're basically a bad person. Um, I totally allow people space to do better and have a great life. I want people to do better and have a good life. So yeah, I, I don't buy into that, um, you know, peasants and pick pitchfork. I, I genuinely authentically enjoy the coverage that JLR is doing down on the border and now up looking for Sebastian Rogers when he did the, um, remember the escaped convict? I mean, he was out there all night in the dang woods. No, he's doing, he is doing a great job. Recent years, last three years or so, he's doing a great job. So neither, neither group, I am firmly, I believe that there was a third party that was stirring up a problem between Cajun Navy and JLR. I believe that in my heart. You think about it. JLR went down to the border. I mean, he's going all the way from California to Texas. He is interacting with Border Patrol, Texas State Guard, illegals coming in, uh, NGO representatives. He never, not once, has a problem. Not once. He's respectful. When There was one lady on, uh, one day on the border that was really kind of odd, and she was stirring up some trouble he just backed away like he just was like no nope, not gonna engage so he he's not the way that he was being represented by this other youtuber so yeah it, it was weird and you know i was res i'm resentful that she tried to drag me in and then lied afterwards so i'm i'm resentful about the whole thing yeah, he did go with Gabby Petito. Absolutely busy, Mom. Yep. All the more power to JLR. Anyone who, anyone, everybody can do better. I could do better. I got things I'm trying to improve and make better. It, it's hard to change. And for people that are able to change, they should be celebrated because it's tough. All right. So we have, we, we ended up, you know, kind of gossiping. And so my apologies for that. But golly this is a crazy story and i voiceless man i am so sorry this has happened so so sorry this has happened and when you when you're able to go live again you'll have to come up on panel we'll talk about everything so all right um so let's talk about these two well it's technically now we know that it is a missing mom going to be specific here. It's a missing mom, Veronica Butler from Kansas. And then a lady, a nearly 40 year old lady, Jillian Kelly, who actually is a CPS worker, right? Then the beginning of this story, when these people went missing on March the 30th of this year, when they initially went missing, the story was these are two friends, right? These are two like uh, friendly Kansans that are like on a road trip to go pick the kids up for vis for visitation. It, it was basically presented as a fairly normal average um, outing, correct? Now we know that's not exactly true. For example, Veronica Butler, her name had been implicated against some very serious uh, activities against the children, her children, and her children had been removed and were living with their biological father in Oklahoma. Now the father is now in drug treatment facility. And so the kids were living with his mom while he was getting cleaned up in this rehab. And so somewhere in this mix, and I'm not, I'm not altogether sure if this was just a, like a one day visitation and, and Jillian Kelly is the observer. 
that that uh, Veronica Butler had to have a supervised visitation, and that Jillian Kelly was the just the the uh, eyes and ears of CPS. She was the supervisor of the visitation, and that and that Veronica was going to get a couple of hours with the kids, and then they were going to head back to Kansas. Or there there's some more information that's come out that kind of suggests that Veronica Butler is in the process of getting the children or for her to get full custody of the kids. So whenever children are removed from the custody of a parent, they're provided in most cases, not every case, but in the majority of cases, they are provided a rehabilitation plan, right? And so there's things that you have to do if you're on a rehabilitation plan. You can go to parenting classes and you get, take anger management classes and you have to meet with your kids so many hours supervised and then unsupervised. And so it's a stepwise fashion plan until the state feels like you've proven yourself. And so about 10 days before they go missing, so around March 15th, March, March 20th, um, Veronica Butler filed legal documents saying, I want my kids back. And then I think it's incredibly interesting that as soon as she files the papers and says, I want my kids back, then her husband, her ex-husband or the biological father of the kids goes into drug rehab, which is very interesting, correct? So, so we have to keep in mind, while originally someone reported this story as two friends, road trip, nothing to see here. That's not true. There was a lot to see here. There is a mother who did all the hard work to get her two kids removed from her custody. That is very difficult to do for a judge to take two kids away from their biological mom. Something bad was going on at the Butler house. That's number one. Number two, not only was Veronica without her children, she was restricted in being able to see them. She was restricted to a, a visitation that had to be supervised. So there's a lot here. There's a lot of problems here. There's a lot of potential perpetrators here for two women missing in the middle of the Oklahoma desert. It's not real desert, but it's flat. It's the prairie in the perfect sense of the word. So the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation did say that, and I quote, there is evidence to indicate foul play. They located, let me see what you guys are looking at right now. They located the car. There you go. So they located the car just outside. They, they were supposed to go to Eva, and the car was located somewhere out here, um, 15 miles or so from where they were supposed to have the pickup, right? Somewhere around Elkert. It, it, it was here somewhere. So Hugo Tun kansas is where the road trip started that's where the two women were from and so the drive is it's 48 miles 49 miles and it took 50 minutes so they went through elk heart and then they were headed toward eva where there was supposed to be somewhere up here there was supposed to be a pickup or maybe it was down here in eva there was supposed to be a drop-off point, a, like a switch off with the kids that was supposed to happen. Um, and then just shortly before they were to meet, there was a agreement to change the pickup location. So now we have another red flag, don't we? It's an additional red flag. So the item, Kathy says, you know, where the car was identified, which was literally the middle of nowhere, literally the middle of nowhere. 
the the uh, th reason that they say there's evidence of foul play is that where the car is located, there was a lot of blood on the road. The blood was covered with kitty litter. My dog just looked at me like kitties. <laughs> okay, kitty litter, right? So right there, we've got two reasons we know that this was planned. Number one, we know it was planned because the drop-off location was changed to reflect a very isolated area. Let's see if we can... So if you look around here, there's just not much out where, where they're at right here. You see any buildings at all? I mean, there's really just nothing here. There's a, a school, but they're busting these kids in from all over to bring them to these very, very rural uh, schools. So there's a bus station old old pumping unit there but look at this there is just nothing out here it's kind of crazy What, just definitely rural farming, right? It's interesting because this is the same area where, or same type of area where uh, Suzanne Morphew was found. You know, very flat, prairie-esque type place surrounded by agricultural. And then at, once they got off of Highway 95, they jumped on 56, and then that would take them straight into Kansas. So that's the location. I mean, look at, it's all farming. There's just, you know, you might see a few isolated farmhouses here and there. And so the location was changed. And somewhere along this road is, you know, an old abandoned gas station. And that's where they were supposed to be meeting was this gas station. And when they finally locate, first of all, they didn't show up where they were supposed to be. And then when they finally, you know, got to looking around, look, identified the car, then they noticed, well, this is curious. Here we are in the middle of America's heartland, surrounded by the food we eat, right? And why is there a big old pile of kitty litter here? And so they got to messing around with the kitty litter and they saw, oh, it was trying to soak up the blood. So it's very, very, very interesting. And I think it's going to end up being one of those stories. Let me go ahead and pull out here. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting, be one of these stories that is going to end up just taking social media by storm, right? Yeah, literally the middle of nowhere. And so I think it's going to end up being one of those stories that will take social media by storm. I think that all in all, there's no way around the fact that this is a just incredible, incredible story. The car being found near Elkert, which was that bigger town. Let me go back to my map here. Elkert is this town here. They were supposed to meet in Eva, but they changed the location to an even more isolated area, the abandoned uh, 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 gas company. And so they, it was somewhere in this area, just right down the road from where they were supposed to meet. So the, so the handoff happens in a highly, highly isolated area. No witnesses, right? I thought I had a video up here. I do. Right here. Where's my video? Here it is right here. 
Okay, so let me share this video with you. Present, share screen. Okay, so when I say the middle of nowhere, I mean the middle of nowhere. I'm not being facetious. That's the middle of nowhere right there. If you're from the country, you know this place well. This is the middle of nowhere. You're in a very rural area. It's very dark. It's very desolate. And suddenly you found yourself followed. Did I get any of that wrong? And take me from there. So we started off our day in Oklahoma City where we went to the OSBI and we've been making our way slowly uh, to the area where the women's SUV was found. And we know that they were supposed to meet up at this abandoned gas station, the Four Corners, uh, which we went to um, and we checked that out. And then we took this right on Highway 95 to see if we could just quickly find the spot where the women's SUV was located, Road L and Highway 95. We turned off. And we looked around and we really, you know, we've been reporting on it and we knew as our team would put a safety plan in, in place together for ourselves saying, let's all watch each other's backs. Let's share our location with other people. We got to this location and I filmed it. You can see it right there. Road L is actually off of 95, a, a bit more than we expected it to be. Now, exactly where the car was is between that area and where this cross was found. We found this white cross with yellow ribbon, the women's names are on that cross. Who placed it there, we don't know. Uh, but our plan was to show this to you, to film it and get out of there. And when we went to turn around to go back down this long dirt path road L, this big black truck uh, with tinted windows pulled up and seemingly looked like it was gonna start to block us. And our plan all along was if we see somebody coming down the road, let's all get in the car and get out of here, which is exactly what we did, uh, driving back towards the gas station and getting back over here uh, to a well-lit area so we could report to you tonight. But the point was to show you where the SUV was found, uh, what, you know, there has been no information about what has happened to these women. We have been pressing the OSBI uh, for days now, for over a week. We don't have any answers. We know that nobody's talking. And Ashley, you and I have been doing these missing person cases for a really long time. And whenever I arrive to a scene like this, I usually see a grid search. I see canine units. We see a command post. We see the types of things that we're used to, but there is nothing. There is no mm. sign of a search going on right now where we are in Oklahoma. Okay, I have a question for everybody. What do you think that's about? Why do you think there is no grid search? Why is there no search? What is happening here? Why would the cops not do a grid search? I mean, out here, everybody's got a horse, right? There, you should be seeing men, all women all over the horizon on their horses, searching for people wandering around, lost, falling in the drain ditches. Why weren't that, why weren't they out there looking? I think because they already know who did it. I think they know who the culprit is and they're just in the process of trying to find them or, or locate where they might be, right? That's what I think. So, so now we're going to launch into wild speculation. Um, I should say it properly. Wild speculation Friday, right? So, I, you know, not to, um, I'm not hating on gray hues so don't don't get mad i'm not going to talk mean about him but i i got tickled the other night as he was you know doing the work of god and was basically revealing a missing person's sexuality to the world i'm not sure why we'd had to do that but it wasn't you know comfortable um he started doing wild speculation, right? He started, he, I mean, it was wild speculation that made me proud. Gray Hughes, I'm damn proud of the speculation you put out there the other night. Um, that, that was some really good work. I mean, it look, it looks like you've been listening to other people that do wild speculation and you're learning because it was very, very good. And, 
what I am speaking of is I'm speaking on the young man, the Texas A&M student, um, uh, Caleb Harris, uh, who was in Corpus Christi. And he went, he just seemingly vanished into thin air, poof, literally vanished, just like Sebastian Rogers, right? And he was talking about that. And look, let's face it, Greg Hughes is very good at using maps and uh, identifying certain things with the technology and computers, figuring out the height of people, things like that. So he's very good at what he does. Um, but as I listened to his speculation and he talked about, well, Caleb could have walked here and then a person could have picked him up there. And then they turned around and they went back to this other place here. And then that would account for why they would be at this location with this ping tower. And as I'm listening to him and I'm thinking, yeah, that's true crime. Like what you're doing right now is what people enjoy about true crime. We enjoy looking at the facts, the real stuff that is verifiable. And then we try to come up with a story that would that would satisfy and fulfill the parameters given us by the the uh, facts of the case. So I thought that was interesting that he sort of now made that leap into wild speculation because he's previously has really disliked that, that whole process. But I thought he would it was really good. I thought he did a good job. So with these two women. I think it's incredibly interesting that you were in a location like this, very rural, very isolated, a planned meetup, an exact time given, an exact location given. Um, the fact that you don't have any cops out there, nobody's doing the grid searching, all that, you know, that tells me they know who it is. And it tells me that Veronica Butler was probably involved in whatever happened. I don't know if if she set up the whole takedown and maybe the grandmother didn't show up with the kids on time and that's why the kids didn't get taken. The other possibility would be that she was the one who was actually set up, that the grandmother who has the kids and the the um, biological father who was in treatment that they panicked and said, Oh my gosh, we cannot let her take these kids again. Last time she nearly killed them and we can't let this happen. We have to protect the kids at all cost. And, you know, maybe dad had some friends that was able to disappear Veronica Butler and didn't really realize that Jillian Kelly would be there because she was actually a CPS worker. She shouldn't have been there. So I kind of think the cops know who did this. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about that explanation? You think that the reason they're not out searching madly for a missing two missing people, you think it is really um, that they're just incompetent or understaffed? Or do you think it's because they know who did this? If you think they know or have a pretty good idea, put a one. If you think they're understaffed and they just didn't have the ability, put a two. High Hopes says, while uh, the black truck story was a lie, the driver of that truck talked to the ladies who were there searching and the news crew was in front of the black truck not being blocked in. <laughs> High hopes. Thank you for the, for a little bit of just facts. We appreciate it more than you know. Thank you. Hey, onward and outward. Joseph Christine, how are you, my friend? All right. So most people think it's, it's a pretty good indication they know who did it. Maybe they're just conducting an investigation, gathering evidence, perhaps. All right. Yeah, I, I find it, um, <laughs> Ava Renee forgot the question. The question was, the fact that there's no search going on, do you think that's because the cops knew who did it? Or you think they're understaffed and not able to search? 
me the same hybrid Pisces. Absolutely. Well, it's possible high hopes, but, but it is possible that they could have arranged a supervisor through Oklahoma, right? These women were coming out of Kansas. So it, sh it could have been, she could, and, and to be fair, Jillian Kelly, it's possible she was doing like a home study. It's possible she was there. It, there's a lot of reasons that she could have been on this trip. But I'm going to tell you, most of the situations that I've been involved with, the, the uh, CPS workers take their own car. I find this to be really dangerous that she would ride in the car with a woman who was having court-ordered visitation, supervised visitation. I don't think this was a very good plan. So I, I find it interesting that she was in the car, that they made the visit under these circumstances, but maybe, maybe that's how they do it in Kansas, I, but not, not in Texas or uh, West Virginia or Louisiana. Well, no, that's not true. Cause I remember one time in Louisiana, there was a, I don't know. I just don't think it's very common that the, that the uh, supervisor would ride with the person Dad got out of prison and court ordered to Oklahoma city um, rehab. He has relinquished his parental rights to his mother. She is a large land landowner in the area and BF big employer. BF. BF. So people are afraid. BF. I don't know what BF is. Is that like BF deal? <laughs> what that means? She's a child advocate, not a CPS worker. Yeah, but but they work together on the case, right? They they work with the attorney, um, the guardian ad litem. They're a team for these types of cases where uh, court ordered visitation has occurred. Boyfriend, <laughs> thank you. She is a huge landowner in the area and boyfriend's big employer. Agreed, true crime curator. I, I think this is a curious setup here. I don't quite understand this. And I even wondered, I, I'll tell you this too. I wondered, is there another car? Maybe they were not driving in the same car. Because that stuck out to me immediately. I thought, wait a minute, you're saying these two ladies are not friends. In fact, in some ways, they're kind of adversarial in, on a on certain level. And they made an hour-long trip together for a supervised visitation. There is something very wrong with that picture. So now I'm kind of wondering, maybe there is a second car um, at, that somebody else has taken now and is, is gone. Liability would be off the chain. She was a child advocate, boyfriend. Yes, they say she's a CPS worker, but I thought she was someone the court approved as a supervisor, like what my brother has to for his visits. They have to be approved by both sides. It depends upon the role that she was operating in, right? There are, there are a number of things that could have been happening. Um, it's possible she was doing a, a home study visit. It's possible that she was there to evaluate the, uh, the interactions between the children and Veronica. Is, there's a lot of things that, it, or she just could have been the supervisor for supervised visitation. She could have been serving a very simple role of just sitting and watching what was happening, right? But in all of those contexts, you really wouldn't see them riding together. So I think this is very strange, meaning Jillian is more Veronica's friend. No, they're not friends. They are not friends. That has come out. In the beginning, they tried to say that the, this was two friends together. That is not. That has now been debunked. Jillian Kelly was working. I mean, look at their ages. Jillian's 39. Veronica's 27. It, it's not really a... 
I mean, there are some, I've got a friend that there's a big change in age, but I don't know. There's something not right about the fact that she was in the car too. So, so it makes me think somehow someone, this was set up. I believe I, ha I'm, I have zero doubt about that. This was a setup. What I don't know, what I think is most likely, let me, let me present it this way. I think it is most likely that it was somehow set up by the dad or the grandma trying to protect the kids trying to protect the children from this previously violent mother, Veronica Butler, right? So I look, it would be hard for me to know that, you know, one of my kids was about to be turned over to someone that I thought was dangerous. I would be moving heaven and earth to protect that child, even if it meant me going to jail, correct? So that's one of the reasons that I think I kind of think maybe this has to do with maybe dad has a friend from back in the pen that owed him a favor and he called that favor and you know and said you gotta you gotta get miss butler out of the picture because i'm not letting her have my kids so i kind of think that might be it the other possibility maybe is uh, veronica butler set this up herself and it didn't go as she had planned. Maybe the grandmother didn't show up with the kids. Her original plan was take the kids, knock off Jillian and the grandma and hit the road, head to Mexico. Right. Um, so, so we'll see, you know, it, the fact that there's cat litter covering up the blood again, it was planned. People don't just typically drive around with bags of cat litter in their car. Well, sometimes because you like you you use cat litter to clean up like oil that leaks out of your car and things like that but um so let me ask all those of you that live up north do y'all use cat litter in place of salt when it gets icy or no I think phone data is out. I think there was a call to change meeting locations and the car was taken back to that spot. Yeah, the, the, um, there, they did at the last minute, they changed the pickup location to an even more isolated area, right? No, cat litter is not used for the ice. What did you plant your corn? Oh, I cleared the new, you know, where the fig tree was. I do. Well, I thought there were some little fig trees growing. Oh, they all died. That's weird. I wonder what beetles or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Plant that crook neck squash. Yeah. No, don't fret. Do a raised bed. Maybe that'll help. Do grow them in a raised bed. That's a good idea. All right. Sorry, y'all. We had a moment. Yeah. Jackie Blue says, hello, Bill. Yeah. you suck, Soaking up oil is typically what, what I've seen it used for other than the obvious. Yeah. Yeah. that Yes. Hybrid. When I lived in um, West Virginia, I used to keep salt bags of salt in my, the back of my Yukon for when it got icy. Kitty litter turns to powder. Not my kind. My kind clumps. <laughs> kind of weird though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, um, the, the kitty litter for oil is perfect. I mean, it's, it's very effective. Yep. Yes. We, my nubbin and peaches, their kitty litter is clumping kitty litter and not those crystals. Don't use those crystals. They, they breathe that stuff and it's bad for their lungs. All right. So interesting, isn't it? The story, the, the, that's why I think this is going to be one of those stories that's really going to take off with social media, because this is the kind of story that the sleuths love. If y'all agree with me, if you think this is going to be a popular story for the sleuthy people, um, put a one. Hey, Moonlight View. I weighed down my little mini Cooper with a bag of salt. Do you, do you love your mini Cooper? 
my little niece had a little blue Mini Cooper. Oh my God, it was so cute. <laughs> it was very cute. <laughs> All right. Onward and outward says, yes, this is going to be popular with the sleuthy types of people. It's going to slowly grow. It, see, I think it just, I think when it, when the story came out that it was friends, I think people just thought that's sad. That's too bad that this happened. And they're both very attractive women. So you kind of naturally think about the whole trafficking aspect poss possibility. But there's no doubt the plot thickens. The story gets all the more interesting when you realize, wait a minute, little Miss Veronica Butler hasn't always been as squeaky clean as she is now. And she has a fairly difficult history, violence even. And Jillian was actually there in a, as, a, as a representative of the court, right? Now it takes on a whole different meaning, whole different ball game now. And I, to, to, you know, frankly, in the words of John Pryor, frankly, Judge, I'm having a hard time dealing with, do I think that it was Miss Butler who did it and the plan didn't work because grandma didn't bring the kids for the meetup or was it dad calling in a favor from one of his prison friends saying, hey, they're going to hurt my kids again and I can't have that. Please help me. And I don't know which one it is. What do you got? Have y'all have y'all thought about these? So what's the more likely possibility? I thought of you this week when listening to the psychologist testify in the Morgan Geyser hearing for conditional release. It was very interesting testimony. Some of the best I've seen. Um, I, you know, I don't even know who Morgan Geyser is. I'm embarrassed to say that. Morgan Geyser. Let me do a quick. I was going to talk a little bit about Caleb Harris. I'm going to try to talk Piddle and Bill into going down to Corpus Christi this weekend. Morgan. Kaiser. Oh, that's a slender man stabbing. Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser. I know exactly who this is. So Anissa, was Anissa the one? Um, oh, you got me hooked now. I know what I'm going to be watching tonight. Okay, so Morgan was, which one was the one who had the creepy brother? Anissa was the one that had the creepy brother. Wow, that was such a tragic, horrible, horrible case. Okay, I know what that, I know it now that you said that, um, True Crime Curator. I'm going to watch that. I didn't realize that it was that it was going on. So I'm definitely going to watch that tonight. The news is that Kelly is a pastor's wife and approved supervisor, not professional visiting my young adult kid. What? My sorry, my chat jumped. The news is Kelly is a pastor's wife and court approved supervisor, not a professional visiting young adult kids near Eva. And the story locally is the grandma is definitely not to be played with. Well, so she sounds tough as nails. All right. I need to learn the basics of this case. I've been solely focused on Sebastian. Same Jackie, and I've been trying to get into the whole Chad Daybell testimony trial, and the sound is so bad, I can't understand what they're talking about most of the time. Those of you that have been watching the Chad Daybell trial, are you able to understand the sound? If you can't hear anything, put a one. If you think you can hear it just fine, not having any trouble at all, put a two. Because I've just abandoned giving up trying to listen. 
It's terrible. I'm visiting my kids who live near there and repeating what the young adults are saying. Thank you, Blonde PT. That is fascinating. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this little nugget, this little snack. True crime snackaroonie. Grandma and her friends claim they are sovereign citizens. Who knows about those people who believe that they are sovereign citizens? See, you guys are amazing, truly. So the, so the whole sovereign citizen thing, these are the groups of people, patriots or prepper type people. Um, and they believe that the court has no jurisdiction over people, oh, American citizens, basically. They wouldn't say that they're citizens, but they're saying that the Constitution and the way the United States government is set up, that when you are born and you get a birth certificate, you have become the property of the United States government. And so they follow certain procedures and you know, they use very specific phrases and things like that, that they say are loopholes that make them immune to government laws and regulations, right? What, what do they say? I'm a sovereign. They say something weird, like I'm a sovereign private person or say, they have some little statement that, that basically they think if, if they, make this statement to law enforcement, then they don't have to abide by the laws of the land. So it's, it's this, I think QAnon is probably often associated. I'm not saying all QAnon are sovereign citizens, have believed that they have sovereign rights, but, but it's closely aligned. These people are all kind of closely aligned. And basically they, they look at the United States government, as a like a tyrannical kind of illegitimate government and they have they're trying to state their independence like i'm an american national not a not a slave to the federal government so it's kind of it's kind of hard to um there was recently a lady that was arrested for killing her child and i don't remember her name she she presented as a sovereign citizen. She refused to give her name when she was in court. Um, she refused to give her name because she believes that identifies her as a property of the U.S. government. She refused to give her name, and she said she called it something. Um, the, the same group also believes that the United States government as a tyrannical, illegitimate force that it actually was established by, you know, who the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, you know, the Cheneys, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, the, the reptilians, that, that group. And, and then they're, you know, so, so they try to use this weird speech and loopholes and things to say, you can't hold me to the laws of the United States government. So granny is a sovereign citizen. That's very interesting, isn't it? Because that makes things even more likely that it was probably the dad that set this thing up. Daryl Brooks claimed to be a sovereign citizen. Oh my God, Alma, are you telling the truth? That man was a lunatic. Hey, Fractured Fairy Tales. She said she was representing the being known as blah, blah. <laughs> I love it. Do we know who blah blah is or we're going to just call him the being formerly known as blah blah he was a nightmare and that judge had the patience of job that was a crazy 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 trial they don't think they need driver's licenses or insurance they don't think they need anything it's kind of crazy All right. So see, this is one of those cases. This is one of those cases that's got a great deal of intrigue. They do not pay taxes, Jackie Blue.
they pay cash for everything they barter they work for one another and rather than see you don't want to use united states money because that's slavery right it's a contract so they'll work and then they'll exchange things like goods and services like you like right now bill is growing corn so he'd go get his haircut and when he got his haircut then he'd pay for it with you know a bushel of corn so they live that type of of life db says oh boy sovereign citizens they all the benefits of culture and none of the responsibilities or accountability and they tend toward private gun sales don't they they don't they they have a ton of guns and firepower and they trade off they don't sell it they, there's no record of who has which gun that kind of thing i sometimes wonder how i wonder if the odinite religion has trickled into the sovereign citizen movement i can see those types of people jihawing together, right? Yeah, they're quite legal fundamentalist. Yes. Thank you, CB Slinger. You would be correct about that. I agree. They call themselves fundamental. Uh, constant, do they call them themselves constitutional fundamentalist? Is that what it is? I think it's constitutional fundamentalist. Did, what was that movie with my friend Matthew McConaughey in it? A town named. What was the name of that movie where he declared his own country? Y'all remember that movie? I'm going to have to ask Matthew next time we're hanging out on the back porch drinking mint juleps. Matthew. Movies, man declares country. I don't remember the name of the movie. The Free State of Jones. That's it. Matthew called me on the phone to tell me. Thank you, Matthew. You're your sweetheart. I'll catch up with you later, buddy. Hold on a minute. I'm going to show you all this. Y'all hang tight. Just talk amongst yourselves. Make yourself comfy. All right. Present. Y'all ready? Here we go. From this day forward, we declare the land north of the Pascagoula Swamp, south of Enterprise, and east of the Pearl River to the Alabama border to be a free state. I just want to say this. I'm sorry, y'all. Please forgive me for interrupting this fine human being. But this accent coming out of my friend Matthew McConaughey's body. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Swamps south of Enterprise and east of the Pearl River to the Alabama border. Be a free state of Jones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As such. We do hereby proclaim and affirm the following principles. God, he's good looking. <laughs> no man ought to stay poor so another man can get rich. There you go, Matthew. And two, no man ought to tell another man what he's got to live for or what he's got to die for. Absolutely. Preach it, brother. Number three, what you put in the ground is yours to tend and harvest and ain't no man ought to be able to take that away from you Woo! number four every man's a man you can walk on two legs you're a man right. oh look at that oh god he's so good looking <laughs> Woo. Y'all, excuse me, I got to go get a drink of water. <laughs> I'm going to go right back here. Hold on. Every man's a man. Every woman's a woman. You can walk on two legs. You can walk on two legs. You're a man. You're a woman. Right there. 
all right all right all right <laughs> we'll just leave that we'll just leave that little treat right there while we finish i am not blushing diamond park i promise you that <laughs> jackie blue is she crushing on ryan goslin <laughs> Ryan Gosling's a cutie pie too. Absolutely. Matlock. <laughs> Look at that face. You tell me, is that a face only a mama could love? Hell no. Isn't that right, Martian Planet Art? Hell no. That is a face any woman would love. My honka honka burning love. There you go. He can come, he can eat crackers in my bed anytime. All right, y'all. Enough of that foolish, that girl foolishness. Bye, Matthew. I'll call you later, babe. All right. So my apologies if I offended anyone with my crass and careless behavior. All right. Jillian is one of four CPS workers appointed there. I know I'm embarrassed. I shouldn't behave that way. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to set this video to private. I guess I could set it to members only. Couldn't I not going to be able to leave it out there because people get offended. They'll say, you know, Jules, that is sexual harassment. And then I'm going to say, no, it's not. It's love. I promise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> enough, enough before I get in trouble. All right. Lord have mercy. Hey, Sketty Nona. How are you, my friend? All right. So, um, interesting story. Definitely fascinating. Now that we actually know the truth about the relationships between these two women, that it was not, in fact, friends, but that Jillian was in a supervisory role and that there was, in fact, active court action concerning Veronica Butler and her her state um, that she had asked for custody of her children back and the way oh lord martin caught me lordy lordy now i gotta be all embarrassed and ashamed all right i, I am not <laughs> i've got a shamed bone in my body all right um the way that we got on the whole matthew mcconaughey problem and the because because he did a movie called the country of jones which was really kind of the first individual sovereign citizens right that was really the the first of the of this movement was this man that came up and made his own country where black or white you stood on your own two feet you worked and you, what yours what was yours was yours and that nobody owned you and that with the federal government we are technically slaves we're assets of of the government of the united states constitution so the reason we brought up i'm working this backwards y'all stay with me the reason we went from matthew mcconaughey state of a uh, country of jones to sovereign citizen discussion is that apparently the very wealthy granny who has custody of Miss Butler's children, she herself identifies as a sovereign citizen. And she has a boyfriend who is a very powerful man. And together, the two of them own much of the land in this particular Oklahoma County. So I ask you, have you ever seen a true crime story this interesting from the get-go? Well, you know what, CB Slinger? You just got your little ass banned. There you go. You gone. All right. Now then. So it's an interesting story it's full of interesting moving parts and so i think it you know there, there is some interest in the story but i think it's going to take off i think it's going to be huge i i think this story is going to end up being big so 
All right. Lots of rabbit trails in this story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Sure is. Okay. Just got notification. That's all right, Ramblin' Rome. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Now then. Yeah. Suffering citizen. That's exactly what we were dealing with. Okay. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I love the fact that you guys gave me the heads up that there, Morgan Geyser, one of the young ladies in the Slender Man attack against Peyton, um, she was denied her, her request to be released from a mental institution. Um, they were convicted in 2017 of attempted homicide of their friend. And it was just a curiosity. We're going to kill you to try to, to summon the mythical, you know, slender, slender man. And, you know, they, one of them, the, they had a brother who was very creepy and scary kind of guy. And um, so I'm going to, I'm going to watch that tonight, go through it, watch the, the, uh, court testimony, and then I'll do another live about that when it was Deborah Collins. Interesting. Oh, was she wrong? She said that they, the guys are never had psychotic symptoms. She was faking them. Dr. Lundbaum recommended a denial. That is interesting. Hard to predict without having a better understanding of that past history of violence. It's hard to predict the future, Dr. Lundbaum said. Geyser has not changed her story, but instead attributes her attack to her own alleged trauma rather than mental illness. Time will show she's a healthy and stable person who needs to be released to the community. So Wire did get released. Why? Weird. All right, I'll get into that and come back and, and talk about it a little bit. Um, I do like I do like the uh, court cases where they do the psyche valve and everything because I'm a licensed psychologist too. Um, so let me read about it and see what these two people, you know, what they found out and all that kind of stuff. Great thing is that law enforcement immediately asked for outside help. Yeah, FBI has been there. And can we be honest, FBI, they're going to have a little bit of trouble with this case because mom is part of that very powerful sovereign citizen movement. And if there's plenty of land and money involved, that could turn out to be a real mess trying to arrest and prosecute, correct? So, um, so this should be an, a very, very, I think this, is going to be one of those cases that grows and takes off and becomes very, very big, like the Jody Arias case did. Hey, good Toro with an eight. Thank you. I made somebody mad while ago. They left. They said that I was full of BS and they left. And all we were doing was having a little fun, little girl fun. All right. Have to rewind to the SH or love <laughs> part. I already got in trouble. I lost one subscriber because I made a little joke that was actually probably sexual harassing in nature, but it was all in good fun among girlfriends. You know what I mean? So I did get in trouble. And for CB Slinger, my apologies to you. I didn't mean to offend anyone. So I'm sorry. All right. Um... check in something and that is not done yet so uh this case reminds me of the pike county shootings it was a fight over a baby absolutely honey k i'm telling you people get nuts when they love their kids and someone's trying to take them people get they can't tolerate the thought of their child being in the 
being under the care of someone that they believe is dangerous. They just can't tolerate. I am offending snowflakes. CB Slinger is a snowflake. Um, yeah, it's really awful. Can't what you can't win either way. You can't loosen people up with a little lighthearted fun, you know? I mean, look at old Charlie Adelson. Charlie, what? I promise this. Charlie Adelson got uh, convicted because he told a bad joke. That's why he got convicted. These uber serious type of people that think you're horrible if you laugh and kind of have some fun, they don't understand jokes. I mean, I'm going to ask y'all, okay, and maybe I reveal a little bit about myself, but me, my friends, my family, it would not be shocking. It would not be horrifying if, let's say, let's say somebody in my family got divorced and I bought them a TV for their new apartment or something like that. And I said, well, I thought about hiring a hitman, but the TV was so much cheaper. You get more enjoyment out of the TV than the hitman. Everybody would laugh. No, but no one would think it was in bad taste. Nobody would put on any fake, false, virtuous airs. Everybody would just be like, ha ha, yeah, yeah. And then you go on, right? But that comment, his sister, Wendy, saying that in the police station right after the shooting, Wendy's your girl. There's your perpetrator right there. She's the one that did it. And she set Charlie up. But, you know, when you combine that particular joke with the realistic, you know, tragedy and trauma of what happened to Dan Markell, that's all the jury needed to hear. That's all they, he, he was convicted because of that joke that was told. So Moonlight View says, I'm so offended by the offensiveness, damn it. You're an offender, Jules. All right. It, it's okay, Moonlight View. Just breathe, you know, just take a few deep breaths. I am being offensive. I'm sorry. I am not politically correct. I want to be. It's something I dream about and something that I think I'm going to really work on that. So when I become an adult, I'll be politically correct. But I can't get into it. I can't embrace it fully because I think it's not. I think it's not that I think the issues are nonsense. I think they're very, very important. But but I think when people get more offended by words than by what's actually happening to people. That's when I have to step back and say, I can't get into all this. I, I don't want to do this. I'd, I'd rather fix the problem that's hurting people and not spend so much time, you know, wringing my hands because someone said a word that I didn't like. Hey, Rock Chalk, are you fixing to fuss at me, Rock Chalk? Are you fixing to say you are full of BS? I am, I am unsubscribing and leaving here. I hope you don't, though. I hope you stick around. Lots of people use humor in intense circumstances. Working in healthcare or law enforcement, sometimes using humor is the only way to deal with things. Absolutely, Blonde PT. And when, you, when you're in one of those jobs where that is what you're dealing with, um, that, that the, there is terrible trauma and tragedy, you don't have to pretend to be virtuous, right? You're, you're doing it. You're living the life. You're the one that's, you know, wrapping people's heads up you know, well, anyway, I'm not going to be in poor taste, but you know what I mean. Well, welcome, Rock Chalt. I'm glad that you are here. Appreciate that. Um, thank you, good Tora. Or no, good Tara. Your name is Tara, not Tora. Those are old eyes. Rock Chalk, you are amazing out there looking for these women. Prayers sent to you. Are you are you there on the ground, Rock Chalk? Well, you are a blessing. Thank you so much. Well, maybe that's why CB Slinger got so mad. Maybe he thought maybe he is a sovereign citizen and he thought I was hating on sovereign citizens. I'm not hating on sovereign citizens. Came home late last night. So you were you were actually in Oklahoma, Rock Chalk? You are one good soul. She has a channel and has been going live. Oh, 11 days there. 
let me find your channel, Rock Salt, and we'll put the a link up. Hold on a second. I love it when we make new friends. That's what it's all about. Rock Chalk. Missing Kansas women from Kansas Four Corners. Look at you. Thank you. Subscribe and like. All right, I can hear you. I'm listening to your video right now. Copy. All right, let me give y'all her link. And now, and then I'm going to paste. All right, so there is the link, y'all, to Rock Salt. And now I'm going to share one of her videos, if that's okay with her. This is so exciting. I, I did. I had no idea. I hadn't seen your... Um, your work so th thank you this is amazing Let me turn up yes, the sound. Me. okay i want to make sure i dropped a link for sophie hey everybody i know it took me a minute i got this new phone and it's very touchy i'm an iphone user and this other phone because i needed more service is a android so okay let's see here i'm going to start with the comments real quick hello everyone Well, the, there is a lot going on, Rebecca, but um, there is some people that was on the live that I need to go back and edit it. <clears throat> I just haven't had time. Oh, playing, he's playing the drum. He's got a drum going. I told y'all this was Oklahoma desert. Over there. It's not technically a desert, but it's, I mean, it is flat uh, and you can I'm just watching your drone. Miles. I'm just watching your drone. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you was here with uh, Dan and, yeah, I remember you. Yeah. We'll watch your drone for a minute. How about that? I am so <laughs> yeah, glad station contracts out. you find you, Rock Hard. You actually, you New tell station me. contracts I mean, out. There's um, a sexy little car. I have a Mustang convertible. New station contracts out their, uh, their video footage. They're filming people. But you see the drone over there? I, I'm out in the sun. I really can't see. So, But I just remember him being here with Burke and Dan the other day. And I definitely don't want to be in this shot. So let me ask you a question, um, Rock Chalk. Do, this, um, how do I say this in the proper way? Uh, okay. Look, I consider myself patriot people. I prep. I have prepper stuff. I have a prepper closet. Okay, so I'm not. Be, I'm not hating on those people that identify as sovereign citizens. So please don't misunderstand my question, please. Um, would you would you say that this is an area of Oklahoma where this movement for sovereign citizen, would you say that that's common, that most of the, most of the citizens living there, I shouldn't call them citizens, most of the people living there probably would um, identify as sovereign citizen? Oh, thank you. High hopes. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's not common. Okay. But then my understanding is that the grandma in this case, that she does identify as sovereign citizen. Is that, is that true? The granny does, yes. Okay, very good, yeah. Hey, Shelly Brooke. And then, and then granny's boyfriend, it was a little unclear to me, It is it that he owns a large business or he works with a large employee, employer? Because it was kind of the way it was described as a little strange. 
the boyfriend is absolutely sovereign citizen. All right. Well, you know what? Oh, dang. I was about to put up a link, but I can't because I got an appointment at five o'clock. Um, so they own lots of farmland. That is an area that is wall to wall farmland. It is. Oh, I bet it is rock chalk. Yeah, I, I am. Get, I'm excited to be able to like start watching your videos tonight and everything. This is great. I'm glad this happened like this. It's wonderful. All right. Okay. So I do have a five o'clock appointment. So I'm going to have to end my live. I've given you guys the link. I hope that you will please, please, please. I'm begging you to go over and subscribe to Rock Chalk. Look at her videos if you're interested in this particular case. Because um, it gives you a really good idea of just how remote and isolated this area is. It may be right off of Highway 95, but when you're in farmland, it's it it's flat. There's nothingness. So um, the wind got her. She has videos to edit. She will put them back up. Okay, very good. So um, rock salt, it's bad out here. And another another question for both rock salt and blonde PT. Is this an area where you would say the methamphetamine is bad? There, there's some areas in Oklahoma that it is. Even the sheriff got arrested. He, he was like the biggest mobster in the county. I mean, he was running girls, selling methamphetamine. Shock a Jayhawk. <laughs> Your name is way too complicated. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Check Ryan up church concert, people, please. I actually watched, I actually watched his concert in where was he yesterday? I don't remember which one, but he was on fire. Meth is big in that area. Yeah, Oklahoma's got some serious problems. Absolutely. Um, I wish I could remember the name of that sheriff that got arrested. He was like mobster, you know, the worst mobster in the state. I'll do some digging. Kansas University alumni. So you're from Kansas going out to Oklahoma to look up this case. Okay. Oh, so look, Rock Chalk knows Kevin McIntyre. There you go. Oh, my goodness. So she's pregnant? Really? That's wonderful. Yeah, that sheriff, that was the craziest story, wasn't it? Crazy story. Sovereign citizens are usually in communities of their own people so they can trade and barter. I, yeah, I would agree with that. High hopes, yeah. But you, but also, things are pretty strange right now in our country, you know? And there's large, larger groups of people that are sort of banding together now. And I just wondered if, it, if this particular group might be one of those communities. But I know, I know what you're talking to. I mean, we were, we had the whole Waco, you know, David Koresh disaster. And that the, re, what started that was the guns that they were, that they had purchased and they were amassing. So sovereign citizens get a lot of attention because of, because of guns and stuff like that. All right. I got to go. I got an appointment at five o'clock and I will be back later on. Oh, wow. Uh, he was a marshal at Waco. Was that not a heartbreak? It was just a, one of the most tragic things ever happened in this country. No doubt. Of, just broken hearted. The whole thing was the lost, the lost agents that we lost, marshals that were hurt and killed. And then the people, the children, it, my God, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. All right. Got to go. 
You guys are awesome. I hope you'll go over to Rock Chalk and subscribe to her channel. She's got more videos that she's going to be put, putting up to show this case. I really want to cover this case because it is just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And Jamie Rosberg is a huge fan of Rock Salt. All right. Y'all have a very good evening. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for not being offended by my particular brand of humor. Y'all have a good day. Bye.